What's up, family? Welcome, welcome to Positive Power Double XI, J. Royce Films. I'm Jerry Royce Live, and you're watching The Red Room with Shea Samuels right here on Music Vision Television. That's right, MVTV-21.com. It's going to be awesome, y'all. So please share this file. It's going to be awesome. You know what's going to be? It's going to be lit. Welcome to The Red Room. I am your host, Shea Samuels, and do we have an amazing, amazing, amazing show for you today. Listen, you know, on The Red Room, we always have some amazing topics, and we are very transparent, and we always try to keep it a little bit real, but for real, all the way real. I have an amazing guest with me today, and listen, I know that you guys probably know this guest, and if you don't, you will learn so much about him today. I have with me Mr. 4 G. Welcome to the Red Room, 4G. Thank you, Shay. Thank you. Uh, thank you for having me. No problem. It is an honor for me to have you here with us, and it's an honor for our viewers to get to learn so much more about you today. But first, tell us who you are and what you are about, what you got going on, all that good stuff. Well, uh, again, I'm, I'm 4G. I'm an inspirational artist uh, uh, based out of Atlanta, Georgia, by way of Panama City, Florida. I uh, recently just relocated here down to the area. Uh, I'm an actor. I uh, recently just got into that. Uh, uh, writer, composer, CEO of uh, my independent label, Grandmaster Entertainment. Uh, I'm just uh, a pioneer out here in these streets, you know, just want to impact lives. Uh, that's just why I'm in a nutshell. I love it. Cool, relaxed. I like it. Like just cool, relaxed. Well, you know, I'm a little, I'm a little this, I'm a little bit of that. You can get with this, so you can get with that. I love it. Well, I'm excited for everyone to learn more about you and this amazing topic that we have uh, tonight. Um, you know, 4G, I know that you are an artist. I know that you do a number of things, but as an artist, it's been really, really uh, it started with me a long time ago, probably back in 2016. Uh, my first single release, I wanted to introduce rap in the church. I remember when I first started talking to the church and I was having this the first night, um, they really didn't want the rap in the church and I didn't understand it. I knew that because of the children that were coming, uh, a lot of my ministry is uh, youth driven. So um, I like to get the youth involved. I believe that we should be training children up as they should go. So everything that I do from my conference to the single releases, album releases, shows that we do, it's always going to be youth centered. So when I started introducing this to this particular church, the pastor there said that they didn't want to have rap artists, Christian hip hop artists in the church. So uh, I talked to them and I talked to them a little bit about why I thought it was imperative for us to do this with the children. And, you know, on previous shows, we talked about diversity. We talk about um, training children up as they should go. The importance of understanding where we are today as it pertains to Christianity, the gospel, the church. Well, I had a group come in. And when I say the group laid it down, they actually laid it down. I looked over and I saw the pastor who was telling me that the guys couldn't come to the church dancing to the music. <laughs> Can you believe that? He was actually dancing to the music. So tonight, I want to talk about the stereotype of what we would call Christian hip hop. You said inspirational artist, um, you know, but there's a lot of people who would consider what you do as CHH, which is considered Christian hip hop. And I realized a lot of people were coming from out of that standard because of the stereotype. But let's first talk about the stereotype. Why is there such a stereotype on Christian hip hop in the community of gospel today? It puts you in the box. Mm -hmm. it, it, you know, the minute an individual, uh, whether it be in the, uh, the, the church arena or the secular arena, mm -hmm. they hit a term, 
Christian hip hop artists. They put you in a box. Yeah. And I'm not that guy. I don't want anybody to put me in the box. Matter of fact, if you listen to my music, according to my wife, she said the only thing that ever uh, made me that was just the title. But my beats are banging. Like, um, I just, I want to be an artist. Um, but I also want to be uh, known as an artist that impact lives. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's um, and, and I, and, I kind of look at an individual who uh, falls up under the, the stereotype Christian hip hop. Mm-hmm. I've seen so many times where uh, a particular artist may cater their lyrics uh, to sound scripturally based things along those lines. There, they 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 go above and beyond mm-hmm. to make it a point to uh a pastor or an organization that hey I'm a I'm I'm you know I'm really a Christian rapper. Yeah. But use the word stereotype. Here is the the dilemma with that. Uh it's kind of like a double edged sword. Yeah. Like you on the the Christian side of things you're dealing with a group of individuals or organisms that already want to embrace you. Yeah. And then on the secular side, you're dealing with a group of individuals that are literally turned off by the title because number one, they think you're trying to preach to them. Yeah. They think the music is boring. You know, I mean, all of that there. And, um, and so I'm a very, very, very uh, prayerful individual. Um, I was raised, uh, you know, to reverence God in everything that I do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's embedded in me. Yeah. And so when I put a lot of thought into it, I'm not when, so I use the title inspirational artist. I am by no ways whatsoever denouncing that Jesus Christ is my personal Lord and Savior. Yeah. I need you to understand that uh, that's who is in me and that's what's going to come outside of me. But with that being said, I also realized that I want to be true to myself. Yeah. And what I want to do is I want to inspire people. And so when you listen to my music and I'm, you know, my music particularly, I, you know, I can't speak for anyone else's, but when you listen to 4G's music, all my music is very personalized. I'm going to give a personal testimonies yeah. about things I've gone through. And I don't have to force anything as far as like the lyrics are concerned. It just comes out. The scripture yeah. is going to come out of those things because it's what's in me. Yeah. Well, the Bible but, says in your heart comes out the mouth. So if that's right. in your heart, it's going to come out the mouth. Right. But, you know, the, like I so said, my ultimate goal is to impact lives and so forth. And um, as I'm sitting here talking, uh, just this thought just ran across my mind. It's like when, when Jesus walked the earth, he never talked about church business. He yeah. talked about kingdom business. Amen. Yeah. And his, his last instructions were for us to go out into the highways and the byways. Mm-hmm. And the last time I checked, the highways represent the streets. Yeah. yeah. So when yeah. I got that revelation, I said, you know what? That's exactly what I'm doing. Yeah. I'm taking it to the streets because there are individuals for this very reason that we're having this topic, who may never set foot inside of a church mm-hmm. because of all the, excuse me, nonsense that goes on. Yeah. They're so turned off. You know, they've been dealing with um, being prejudged, which is, you know, another form of being, you know, prejudice uh, in a nutshell. Um, politics, which I, I totally cannot yeah. deal with. <laughs> and, um, I mean, the list just kind of goes on and on that, you know, it's like, so I'm going to a place, I'm going to meet them where they're at. And I think as an artist, uh, that's my responsibility. It is. Yeah. yeah, it is. And I think where the stereotype comes from really is the fact that, you know, we, we are still living in a day where church was our grandmothers and our aunties and the bishops and the old saints, if you will, the old saints have been um, afraid to allow something new to come in. 
the reason why it's so important, and this is for the viewers, if you're just tuning in, we are talking about the stereotype of Christian hip hop and the importance that it should have, especially in today's church. Um, 4G, I believe that eventually, and I said this before on another talk show that I, I had um, with the Positive Power Double XI family, I Yay. talked about how eventually, if we don't get it right, the children that are growing up in the church will be no more. So after the aunties and the uncles and the church nurses and the bishops, the deacons and everybody else, you know, uh, passes on or over, who's going to be the church at that point? And so I realized at some point that the Christian hip hop arena, because the kids are listening first to the beat, I'm going to tell you something. I went to an event a while ago and I'd never said the name of this event, but I went to an event a few years ago and it scared me to life. I'm not going to say death. It scared me. Well, I went to the event and the people there were Christian hip hop and the music mimicked, it mimicked, uh, worldly music, if you will. There were kids there and the kids were twerking to the music. There was nobody there to teach the children what was actually happening. And the event went on after a certain hour. I was thankful. I have to tell you that I actually knew that kind of stuff happened because my, tr my ministry would allow me to be somewhere during the day. So I didn't even know this stuff happened that night. And so here I'm watching these five, six, seven year old, 10 year olds possibly twerking to the gospel. So I understood at that point that I knew this is possibly where the stereotype comes from, because there are people who are not really teaching the music like you're saying you do as an inspirational, you know, to take it to the streets, but you're teaching the music. So let me ask you this. What would you tell another Christian hip hop artist or what would you tell another inspirational hip hop artist? How can you encourage them to be uh, more aware that the music is touching a certain group of people, right? It's touching a certain audience. That's what it's geared towards. It's not going to touch the aunties. It's not going to touch the uncles. It's not going to touch the bishops and the deacons. It's not going to touch the organ player. But we're trying to get a specific audience, the attention of the power of God through our music. What would, how would you encourage that inspirational hip hop artist or Christian hip hop artist today on the show? You just said it. And see, the first thing you learn as an artist is you have to know your target audience. And so for, hmm. um, for quite some time, I made the mistake of expecting churches to embrace. Come on, 4G. Woo! To embrace Christian hip hop artists. And, you know, I understand that there's life and death in what I say. So I'm going to choose my words very carefully with this next remark. But based on my experiences it just has not happened yeah you know so i came to a conscious decision okay i'm not writing my music for the churches yeah. uh they're they're not my target audience yeah and i and i get that you know what i'm saying it, it is what it is if i pick up some church followers on the way great praise god if I don't, it's okay. It's cool. You're not my target audience. Um, again, I think our responsibility is to go out into the streets. And, and the, the funny and ironic thing about this whole topic is, and you wonder why we're using, losing our youth to the worldly rappers, you know, the, the Little Waynes and the, you know, uh, the all the other artists who are promoting uh, premarital sex and going out there, and, you know, get turned up on drugs and alcohol, yeah. and you know, yeah. like you said, twerking and uh, represent the, you know, all the things that go on at the strip clubs and you know, yeah, um, uh, making it rain, uh, <laughs> you know, it's <laughs> like and, and you wonder why. Yeah. I mean, it's like. God has given a tool for his people. Yeah. Mm. But the the leaders yeah. are so caught up in politics and what's uh what looks right and what doesn't. What brings me to my next topic? 
Lord, I'm trying to choose my words here carefully where I'm about to go with this here. So I'm going to uh, I ask that y'all, I pray my strength in the Lord right now. So um, I was recently at an event that uh, was comprised of uh, a bunch of non-masculine men. Uh, I need you to hear me with your heart because I'm not, I am no way whatsoever passing judgment that ain't what I do. I'm just stating facts. But I was at uh, this event uh, comprised of a bunch of non masculine men, you know, choirs and quartets. And uh, there was, a, there was a, a rap category that was, was very briefly lived. <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, so during this event, these individuals showed out. I mean, they, they literally showed out. And the one segment of the, that was given uh, for the, uh, the Christian hip hop artists per se uh, was Briefly lived. What I observed during that event, though, vexed me to the core because, again, I'm not passing judgment, but I'm talking about a standard that's being set. Yeah. And so the churches will allow this in, but won't allow this in. What you're, in essence, saying is, this is the standard for gospel music. I have a problem with that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's again, it's, it's not a matter of what that individual is struggling with because you never know what they might have gone through. You, 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 you don't know. So I wouldn't go there and I would never disrespect the individual like that. Yeah. But I'm talking about the music side of things. You are saying that this is the standard for gospel yeah. music. Yeah, yeah. I, I wanna say um, in the short period of time that we have, and I love the fact, like I said, I keep saying that we just need to have a part two for every of the guests that we have, cause it's always so good and the time goes by so fast. But I wanna leave you guys with this as the viewers and everyone looking today on, at this show, 1 Corinthians 12 and 27 reminds us that we all are part of the body, right? right. You go into seven, it says that we all have our own spiritual gifts. And the reality of it is, is that this scripture in itself tells us that we are the church, right? So we've put ourselves between the four walls and we've bonded, we've, this is bondage. We're thinking about the four walls as the church. But as 4G said, 4G said, I'm going to the streets. And guess what? The people that he touches, they are the church. So 1 Corinthians 12 and 27 says that we are one body. It's twofold. Corporately, we are one body in Christ, but we are all members. And that's the part that we forget, that we are all members. So 4G, I applaud you. I applaud you for your transparency. I applaud you for identifying who your target audience is, the church, not the four walls. Bro, I'm telling you, when people get a hold of that and when people identify with the fact that they themselves are the church and when they go wherever they go, that they have to be and should be a representation of Christ because you are part of the body. So I thank you for being a part of the body. I thank you for being able to identify with what part of the body you are and the target audience itself. I pray many blessings over your ministry and everything that you're doing and that your music is going to touch a number of people people. And even this show today, I pray that it's going to touch someone who may have not been able to identify the way that you have with the fact that you are the church. So if you are going through some struggles with your being a Christian hip hop artist or some type of music, um, and I'm telling you, I say Christian hip hop because at the end of the day, we have put a stereotype on it. Listen, people, you have to allow an opportunity for our youth to be saved. That's exactly what this show is all about. Training a child as they should go. 4G is doing it with his music. So 4G, I want to thank you. I want to thank you. Listen, 
time flies when we're having fun. <laughs> it's already time to go. So I want to thank you for coming on the show. I want to thank you for being a blessing to so many people. I just want to say that I thank God for your ministry. And I know for a fact that it's going to continue to touch the right people. So I look forward to hearing more from you. Listen, everyone, that's the Red Room. That's the show. I told you we always have some amazing guests and even more blazing topics. So I want you guys to tune into the next episode of the Red Room. I'm your host, Shay Samuels, and I'm out.
Music.